Hello everyone, welcome to KLNOW's interaction with uh, Jordan Murray, the striker of Kerala Blasters. Today we'll be catching up with uh, Jordan and we'll be talking about a lot of stuff. So, uh, please watch the whole interview. So, hi Jordan. Hi, how are you? Yeah, all good mate. Uh, very happy to be here, very happy to talk to you. Thank you, me too. Yeah. So, first of all, uh, let's begin with the current stuff. You know, you're coming from Australia. Uh, so, what are the circumstances that led you to pursuing a football career in India? I mean, to explain my question a bit, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, in India, we have all heard of the A-League facing financial issues, which in turn caused the exit of many players. So, we have Gary Hooper who came uh, for, you know, signed for Kerala Blasters. We have other players also. So, we've heard of these financial issues and all that. So, surely, uh, those have also played some role in your decision making. So, can you explain what happened over the course of the summer that led you to joining Kerala Blasters? Yeah, well, um, first of all, I had a uh, another another year with the Central Coast Mariners. Um but when I was approached by Kerala, um, obviously spoke to my family. I thought it was a really, really good opportunity to, at my age, 25, to also experience the world, um, not only the football, but to meet new people. Um, so for me, it was more of an experience than it was financially. Um, obviously, the A-League uh, took a big hit, a big hit with COVID, uh, unfortunately. And yes, yeah, some players did come. Um but I think, yeah, for, for me, uh, obviously, I think that did play a small role. But for me, it was more about um, knowing that if I look back in 60 years that I've played in a different country, I've met, you know, great people. And uh, I guess, uh, yeah, just uh, I, I can take my football elsewhere and, and learn, you know, learn, I guess, football in a different way. Um and I'm very happy to be here. It's a it's a different league. It's um, it's an up and coming league, um, and it's com- coming really fast, which is really good. And I'm happy to be a part of that. Um, so yeah, it's it sort of, and I, I guess it sort of suits my style too. I before I came, I sort of uh, I, I was watching the ISL anyway, um, with a good friend, obviously Dave Williams, uh, Roy Krishna, uh, Eric Partalu, just some of the fa- Aussie faces there. So. Um, that, that I already did know about the ISL and I was watching a couple of games here and there. Um, and I obviously saw the style of play and, you know, I really liked the real attacking, uh, attacking mindset of the ISL. So, um, yeah, I thought it was definitely something for me, I guess, to experience, um, and to say, you know, yeah, I've played in India and, you know, to look back and, and go, yeah, I've, I've met, you know, uh, great people. I've, I've traveled around India. I've seen India, um, but uh, yeah, obviously we'll see what happens in time, and hopefully um, might be here for a while. Might so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, my next question is about Kerala Blasters. Uh, so, can you take us through the signing process with the club? How did the club club approach you, and uh, what were your reasons to say, "Yeah, I'm in"? Um. So basically, I. Um, uh, as every footballer has an agent, um, speaking with my agent and. Obviously, uh, Kerala were looking for a, a center forward, and my name was uh, my name was in the mix. I'm sure my name was in the mix with a lot of other strikers as well. Um, and then just come down to the process of, I guess, uh, the interest just got more and more. Um, and yeah, I, I just straight away uh, I done my research about the club. Um, you yeah, know, obviously, uh, unreal fan base. Um, that was a big a big thing for me. Um, you know, love nothing more than playing in front of the fans and. And I guess um, you know, having that uh, that relationship with the fans, and obviously, um, and I know all the players do as well. Um, you know, it's a it's a really big club, but it's also a club that's um, I guess I'm coming to the ISL is 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 actually quite young. So I think it's a team that have have done well in the past and have been unfortunate. And I guess it's a team that I want to be a part of to say you know we we, we made history. Um, it's not a team that's won everything. It's a, it's a team that's up and coming, and and I guess being a part of a team like that, it sort of um, it has its has its pros with uh, I guess being a, a player to bring the club into the finals where they've never done before. So yeah, it's just uh, those type of things really uh, really I guess uh, cemented my um, 
cemented my decision to play f- for Kerala, uh, but also the players too. So, yeah, the foreign players, the, I didn't know much about the Indian boys. Um, I, I did my research, obviously, but I guess being here and seeing and meeting all of them, they're, they're absolutely brilliant guys. Um, we sort of become, I guess, family. We've, you know, when you with together, when you with uh, everyone together for six months, it's basically family. You're seeing each other every day. Um, but also the foreign players too. You know, uh, you know, Gary is another centre forward, but someone who I've idolised. You know, since I was a kid, um, watching him play in the English Premier League. Um, just to learn off him and be around him, and I guess watch him play football is is, is amazing. Um, you know, you've got Costa as well, who's just an absolute leader um, and a really good guy as well. You've got Bakri too, who's played at the highest level. Um, you've got now one day, you know, you've got uh, Vincente and now Facundo. So um, you've got these boys here who are uh, established players um, and I guess being around them and, and I guess looking up to them and learning from them, uh, not only football, but just being a person as well. So... These thing, all these things, I guess. Uh, before I came, uh, before I came here, I sort of done my research about and my pros and cons. And uh, again, I'm very happy to be here. So yeah, you uh, you arrived in India, I yeah. think, uh, in early November. So now it has been uh, about two months since you joined up with the team. So what do you make of Kerala Blasters so far? You know, the team as such, uh, their objectives in general. What are what, what do you uh, you know see from them as a team? Um, like I said, they've been very unfortunate in the past. Um, obviously making the finals, losing, uh, unfortunately. But I see I see a club that is obviously striving for success. But I think I think for me the the thing is as well they. As a club, it, they make it a real family club as well because they do bring in the fans and they make the fans feel like uh, the 12th man, if you want to say. Yes. Um, so, you know, that was similar to my previous club uh, in the A-League, very similar, and I, I really enjoyed that. And I, I get that feeling as well um, when I'm here uh, at Kerala. So having having such a, a big fan base, but the fan base being very close to you as well, uh, even though they're so far away, um, it, it is a really it is a really good club. Um, so I'm I am disappointed that we are unfortunately not in Kerala. Um, I would have loved to play in front of the home fans. It would have been really really um, you know really exciting. Um, but unfortunately, it's not to be. Um, but yeah, it's it's a club that's striving for success. That's the main thing. Um, it's a club that doesn't want to make you know third or fourth it's a club that wants to win everything and yeah at the end of the day as a player that's what you want you want to win not only for yourself but as a as a team so let's now speak about our coach kibu vikuna so have you worked under a spanish coach before uh no i've always had a uh, an australian coach or a foreign coach but not a not a spanish coach no so, what are your thoughts on Kibu and uh, Coach Kibu and you know his playing style? So, Spanish football or the you know playing out from the back, maintaining possession, uh, trying to use you know control of the ball to create more chances. So, things like that come in Spanish football, and you are clearly following that at Kerala Blasters right now. So, what do you uh, think about? Uh, what are your thoughts on Coach Kibu and you know his playing style? Yeah, you know, it's um, definitely a, a Spanish way we're playing. Um, and I, I enjoy that because we keep the ball. It's, uh, it's basically uh, everyone having a responsibility and trusting each other when, they, when everyone has the ball. Um, and I sort of, uh, I feel like it's, uh, it's a type of football that really brings out the best in some players. Um, even some players don't, uh, if some players don't like it, it still brings out the best in those players and they end up enjoying it because they get the ball a lot more. They feel uh, comfortable getting the ball where some players in the past have just like, uh, you know, used to getting the ball and playing a long ball. But now they're playing with the ball and when they get confident, it, it is good. It is really good football. So, yeah, we have a plan which where we stick to that. Try to, We try to stick to that every match. Um, you know, obviously, uh, uh, the gaffers come from um, the I League and it's a big step for him too. So, he, uh, you know, he's really enjoying that as well uh, as much as as much as much everyone is. Um, but, yeah, it's it's something that uh, it takes time as well. We've got, we got a lot of new faces in the club as well. Um, it's not going to happen straight away. 
with most football. You look at uh, teams like Manchester United. Manchester United were the team team of the century, if you want to say that. Um, always at the top, and once a coach leaves and a new one comes in, it's different football, uh, and it takes a while. Now tonight, they're now on top of the league. Um, so it's you know things like that. Uh, it does happen. Teams do go straight to the top, but it's that's very rare. So. I guess it's uh, about implementing a style of play that he thinks is best for the team. And, and at times it's working and times have been very unfortunate. So, um, you know, he's giving his best. Uh, the, the whole coaching staff are giving their best. And, um, yeah, we're just looking forward to just playing every week and, and I guess, uh, playing that style of play and, and trying to win. Um, I don't see myself ever playing for a draw. Um, I always like to play for a win, <laughs> as every I think a lot of footballers do. But yeah, we're also um, we're also trying to stick to the plan of what we are doing at training, and um, and I think that showed uh, on the weekend that grit that we had to go down to ten men and still want to play football and still want to win. You know, so that's the type of football that we're we're playing, and and, and hopefully we get results like that. Yeah. So so you are a Manchester United fan? No, I'm not. I'm far from a Manchester United fan. No way. Never. I'm a uh, I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan. Oh, nice! <laughs> we yeah. don't have many yes, Tottenham yes. Hotspur fans in India, but yeah, nice to hear someone you know, oh. different. I support yes. Leicester, by the way. They are like <laughs> ah, okay, yes, yeah, good football, good football. They play good football. But yeah. anyone who's a Liverpool or Manchester United fan need a change to a Tottenham fan. Okay, that's a good message. Uh, so moving on. <laughs> So yeah, moving on. Uh, my next question is about your place in the team. So yeah, we did not see you in the starting eleven. So despite being a foreign player, you know we give uh, you know as uh, in the ISL we give a certain level of importance to foreign players. And despite being one among them, uh, so one of our high-profile signings to be honest, we still did not see you in the starting eleven up until the fourth game, which was against Bengaluru. So and then you scored a goal in that game, then scored against Hyderabad and Odisha as well. Also, starting eleven appearances, and finally a brace against Jamshedpur. Also, another starting eleven appearance. So it it appears that you have finally cemented a place in the uh, starting eleven. Still, you had to wait for four games to you know get that chance. So, what were your thoughts before that? You know, when you were on the bench. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I, I I was I was also the the last signing of the club. Um, I come out of quarantine late. Um, which was unfortunate. Um, I think it was only a couple of days before our first game. So, you know, it's, that's understandable. I, I don't expect to be on the park straight away. Um, obviously, two weeks in quarantine and you, you are training in the room, but it does take it out of you. Um, once I come out of quarantine, I was actually quite fairly fit because I was training I was training with my old team before I come here. So fitness-wise, wasn't much of an issue. Um, I guess it was just trying to... Um, I can't say trying to adapt, if you want to say, to the football. So I didn't expect to be in the, in the team straight away. I was lucky enough to be in the squad for the first game uh, and then come off the bench. But I guess it's a, again, again, it's it's fighting for your position. Uh, the classic example for, for Gary. Gary was one of the first signings to come here. Um, prolific striker, been all around the world. And you just, as a as a player, as a young, especially as a younger player, you don't expect to come in straight away, especially with a high po- high profile player like. Gary, um, yeah, and I was lucky enough just to sit there and watch him play, and to and to, I guess to learn off him very quickly. Um, so yeah, obviously it's taken time. Um, yeah, you you fight for your position as well. Um, as much as we both have a really good relationship, we we both want to play, um, which is a good thing. If if there was you know if one of us just wanted to play, then there would be an issue. But we both want to play, and we uh, we push each other. And whoever starts, if one of us start up top or and the other ones on the bench we're, we're just happy for the other person um so there's no bad blood we're actually good friends um so yeah it was i guess uh, cementing you know now sort of cemented the position but at the same time i don't like to be complacent either because all it takes is one bad game and then uh, you sort of start again so i'm just looking to you know, to train to train strong every week uh, to maintain consistency and then scoring goals every week because you score goals, team wins, and you're sort of in that lineup. So, um, yeah, it did, ta- it did take a while, but at the, at the end of the day, it's all, uh, if you want to say, it's all in the past now, I guess. Um, 
it's all now looking forward. You know, now the uh, first half of the season's gone, the second half of the season's upon us. Um, and, you know, for, as a personal level, I'm just looking to score as many goals as I can, not only for myself, but as a team, um, because I know that if I score goals, the team, the, the higher the chances are for the team winning. Um, and it brings out the best in everyone. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's just now ma- maintaining a good consistency um, and enjoying my football too. So, yeah, uh, you talked about Gary Hooper. You clearly have a lot of respect and admiration for him. So, next, I would like to know about, you know, uh, your other partners in the team. You you seem to have, you know, found a good partnership with Sahal, uh, Rahul. Then, we have players like Jeekson, who has been, you know, showing great promise in the last three or four games. So, we have a, what Kerala Blasters have, what I would call a relatively young, inexperienced contingent, Indian contingent, but still a very good contingent who is capable of developing. So, what are your uh, thoughts on our young Kerala Blasters, young Indian players? You, you, when you arrived here, you did not have much of an idea. Fair enough. But now you've been with the team, you've seen them play. So, what are your thoughts on them right now? Yeah, I think they're. Uh, before I start on the football side, I think they're actually really, really great people. Um, I have found really good friendships with all the Indian players. Um, uh, I speak my uh, my little bit of uh, Hindi that I've learned from them. Um, unfortunately, not a, not a lot of Malayalam. I think it's quite quite difficult to understand <laughs> and to speak. But in time, uh, I will I will try to learn a lot more of it. Uh, but yeah, they they are really really good guys, um, and they made me feel really welcome. So I'm you know I try uh, I'm really good friends with all of them. Um, as people, they're very respectful, and uh, for young players, uh, they are. To see them look up to such as uh, Gary, even myself, and some of the other players, it's, it's a really nice feeling. Um, and, to, and to help them and watch them grow every training session, it's been really, really, um, I guess, exciting for me to watch watch the growth because the team is quite young. Um, you got Jackson, who's very young. You got Sahal, who's still young. You got Raul, who's still young. Uh, Rohit in the midfield, still young. You got a lot of young players, even uh, uh, Ayush, who's who's under, you know a nineteen, Mukta is eighteen, really young squad. So, uh, first of all, they're really really good players. Um, but now into the football side, you see players like Jackson, who's playing a lot of consistent football, and he's shining. He he is shining. Um, I think he's playing really really good football. Um, you got Ra- Raul, who who uh, didn't come on uh, come on late uh, in the on the weekend and, and showed, you know, promising signs. And he has got that, he's got that speed, he's got that skill and, and he wants to win. And you got Sahal who, who's technically gifted, uh, very quick, uh, smart with the ball, can finish. Um, and I guess, yeah, it's, it's just basically a, a team full of a young players that want to learn. Um, and um, again, I'm happy to be a part of, uh, I guess, their growth and, and watching them uh, train and play and, 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 and obviously have a smile on their face every time they touch a ball. So uh, it's a very young team, but it's a, it's a promising team. And I'm sure that Kerala, the Kerala management and everyone here can see can see that. Um, and obviously uh, you can see the sign Jackson staying now longer with an extension. So, you know, I, I think the club do see that uh, a young squad that is ready to fight and, you know, they – Obviously, they everyone every player wants to play for India as well. You know, they want to play for the national team too. So, having that kind of, I guess, um, the the strive to want to play for Indian football just makes it even more, you know, makes it even better for them. So, yeah, I'm 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 very happy to be here and watch them watch them grow every time they play or, and train. Well, uh, yeah, you uh, you surely uh, you know developed a few solid friendships in the team. Uh, As evident from your social media, of course, you know, guys like Rahul, Rohit, Albino, Nishu, everybody seems to be your fan. Uh, Everybody seems to be a great friend. So, uh, who is your best buddy in the team? (laughs) To be honest, all of my best buddies. Um, I can't pick it up. I can't pick out a couple. Um, I've really grown, uh, I guess, with Nishu. Um, Nishu sort of was one of the few that uh, come up to me first and we started chatting. So yeah, Nishu is a really good friend of mine. Um, same with uh, Prasukan as well, the second string goalkeeper. Um, Rohit, yeah, Ro- Ro- me and Rohit are 
uh, real buddies. Um, that's where the that's where the celebration comes from. Yeah, the, uh, snake celebration. So he's um yeah he he's one. But yeah, to be honest, all of them are Raul, Sahal, uh, Setia, Tara. They're all. I don't really say they're my the ones my best friend. They're all they're all my good friends. Um, I interact with everyone, uh, and I know all the other foreign players do. So yeah, they, they, and they welcome me with open arms, which is really nice because sometimes it, when you're coming into a new team, it is quite difficult to, I guess, uh, form that kind of friendship. But when you have players that are already accepting you when you have, before you even met them, it, it's really it really feels nice. So no, we we I guess, and you can see that with the goals that we score. You know, the majority of the whole team celebrating with everyone. It's that tight of a group. So. Um, you know, now we're, we're just looking to bring that tight, you know, that tightness and that, I guess, uh, continuity as a team onto the football park and, and, and working hard for each other. And, and I guess that shows when, when we score and when we win a game, everyone's around everyone, you know, so happy for everyone. Yeah, well, uh, next question is about the celebration. Of course, you mentioned it anyways. <laughs> so this question was actually on popular demand. It's come from uh, fans. So after the game, when you brought out the you know snake, uh, there was a uh, there was actually a heated online debate on what it actually meant. So some people said it's a snake, some people said it's an ostrich, some people said it's the tusker, the one you see on our logo. So uh, st- uh, there was a lot of discussion surrounding it. Finally, uh, you told me it was a snake, and I clarified it. I uh, I gave the reply to some of them. He meant uh, it as a snake. I told them. So, can you actually uh, tell us what's the story behind that celebration? If you don't mind. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so it's the snake. It's the cobra. Um, it comes from um, being around with the boys and obviously learning learning the Hindi. So, uh, uh, Hindi for snake is sap. And I call a... Uh, uh, I've got a little, I guess, uh, the friendship. Uh, Nishu, Rohit, uh, Ayushin, Prasukan and... We call each other saps, we call each other snakes. Um, but it all come from me and Rohit playing FIFA. Um, we were one day playing FIFA and he was changing the settings and I kept on calling him a snake and he kept laughing. And I guess it just kept with that. And every time I'd see him at dinner or something, I would just go like this. So I think um, it just grew It just grew on me. And, and now whenever I see him, I don't call him Rohit, I call him the sap, uh, the snake. So, or Nagaraj, the king of snakes. Um, so we uh yeah i guess it's something that it's just sort of i guess an inside joke if you want to say that but it's grown to be uh something that i we call each other now almost everyone i call a uh, uh, sahala snake <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things that grown so it's nice to uh, i guess for the fans to um to recognize that it's uh to have i guess a debate of what it is but it, no it's the uh it's the snake but it's obviously um yeah, it's it's an inside joke, but I guess it's grown quite viral. So it's pretty it's pretty funny. But I'll continue to do it. I think it's something that um it's I guess we we have um, we really enjoy. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny. It is a good joke. Yeah, well, uh, you call each other a snake, but I think uh, because of your celebration, it is your celebration, of course. So I think fans have started associating you with that snake. So. They yes, just started the calling you yes, stuff yes. like Snake Man and all that. So <laughs> that's sensational. Love it, love it. Yeah, I will continue to do it. It is something that's good, and I guess it does bring a smile to everyone's face as you've got a big smile on yours. So, no, nah, it's something that um, I guess I'll I'll keep. I guess there will be other celebrations, but it's something there that's small, and I guess it um represents myself, if you want to say that. Yeah. Well. Uh, perfect. Well, uh, next question, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll talk about the Australian in you. So, as an outsider, clearly it takes a bit of adjusting to multiple conditions when you're in a tropical country like India. So, the weather is different, uh, the cuisine is different. So, how have you uh, coped you know, with the conditions so far in India? Um, to be honest, I thought I was going to struggle a lot more, but it's actually uh, it's actually not as bad as I thought. It is very humid. Where in Australia, the heat is very direct from the sun, so it's not so humid. Where here, it's not so much direct sun; it's more humidity. So, to be fair, I've, I feel like I've adapted to it quite well. Um, obviously, at the start, the first maybe week or two was was difficult, as it is for probably every player. 
But I think uh, the way I'm feeling, it's I've sort of adapted to it, adapted to it pretty quick um, because it does take it out of you um, if you if you're not used to it, uh, especially the players from Europe and stuff like that, because it, it, it is a different climate. But I think even all the European players have adapted to it quite quickly too. Um, it is something that uh, if you haven't been used to it, it is new. Um, I know. Uh, I guess Gary, for instance, um, same thing in Australia was it was it was difficult, but you adapt to it quite quick. Um, I know some players struggle to adapt with it, but I feel like all the foreign players here have adapted to it pretty quick. Um, for myself, I, I felt like it was similar to Australia. We play we play in the heat, so now we're playing at seven thirty at night, which is a lot cooler. The humidity's um, not as not as high, so it actually helps. Um, it actually helps a lot. So no, I, th- I feel like the I've adapted to it quite uh, quite easily and quite quickly. Nice. Uh, and uh, well, uh, so we'll continue to talk about the Australian that you are. So let's now shift a bit backwards and go back, you know, to your past. Can you take us through your early days? So when you hear Australia, you mostly associate the country with uh, the game cricket. Which is, uh, you know, fair enough, given the dominance that, uh, you know, the, uh, your country has had in the game over the years. So, yeah, with all due respect to, you know, legends like Timmy Cahill, uh, Mark Viduka, still, you know, Australian cricketing legends get more attention. Australia's achievements in cricket get more attention. So, now, assuming that Australia is as cricket crazy as India... Uh, what made you, you know, take the route that was less travelled by? You chose football and what made you choose that path? Well, simply my dad. Um, my dad actually played for Australia. Um, and I guess at a younger age, he just pushed me towards football and I didn't look back. I didn't even choose another sport, if I was honest with you. Um, I played cricket at school um, for the school team and stuff like that. But football was always my number one um, and will always be my number one. Uh, and it all come from my dad um, playing for Australia and having a um, a passion for the game. Um, he grew he grew up in a small country town where rugby league is a um, is a big is a big sport. Um, see, the thing is with Australia, it's not just cricket; it's also AFL, the Australian game, um, AFL cricket, rugby league, rugby union, um, even things like swimming and stuff. The, these type of sports are, are big. Um, so football is competing against five, six, almost ten other sports, um, uh, and and obviously cricket is one of the highest ones. Um, so yeah, you know, it was just my dad. My dad was a, a former player, and it just it just pushed me towards that. Um, and I didn't look back. It was just uh, it was it was a it was a hard time growing up, uh, especially with a growing up with a. A dad that was a footballer, obviously wanting the best, um, so pushing you quite hard. Um, but it was—I I wouldn't change it for the world now. Um, yeah, it was the right path, and yeah, again, I'm, enjoy- I'm enjoying my life, and I'm enjoying football and my experiences. Perfect. So yeah, uh, the South Coast Wolves was your first club, I understand, uh, in your senior career. That is, then you joined API Lakehart. And uh, played for them in the uh, till the summer of 2018. So both clubs play in the Australian National Premier League, if I'm not wrong. Uh, you also set a record in the New, uh, New South Wales region NPL. Uh, you scored like 23 times uh, times a season. So can you take us through that phase of your career? Yes. Yeah, so I'm I'm based in the South Coast in Wollongong, um, and the South Coast Wolves was my first. Uh, so the, the New South Wales Premier League is the second division in Australia. It's probably, I'd say, the the best second division in Australia. There's different ones. Obviously, Australia is a big country, so there are second divisions in every state. Um, but I think New South Wales is the 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 second one from the A League is the second division. Um, so yeah, uh, the uh, South Coast Wolves were the first. Uh, Wollongong Wolves. They were the first um, professional uh, semi professional team I signed for. Um, and I loved it. Obviously, my home club, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great family club. Um, so I was there for, I think, two to three seasons. Um, and then I changed to Arpia, which the main reason I chose uh, went to Arpia was my dad actually played for Arpia. Um, and they're a, a club with a rich history. And I guess um, 
uh, close to my family, really, uh, in terms of uh, I know a lot of people from there. Uh, my dad knows a lot of people from there. It was, I guess, that history of my dad being there, knowing that I was playing in the same, uh, basically at the same club uh, at roughly the same age too. So, uh, and yeah, they're a terrific club. I, I, I'm still in contact with everyone, even players from Wollongong Wolves. I'm still in contact with everyone there. But um, no, I had my best uh, best two seasons there. Uh, uh, I think I broke the record for the most goals scored in a single season. Um, and I actually missed out on three games because I signed for Central Coast Mariners with three games to three games to go. So I could have probably could have scored more goals, but you know, it is, it is actually quite a tough league. The, um, this, uh, the second division in Australia. So that's where a lot of the young players, uh, are, are scouted to play in the A league guys. And I was lucky enough to be one of them. Um, but that was probably one of my best seasons scoring, um, scoring a large amount of goals in, uh, you know, in 19 games. So, um, you know, and again, I, as I do with every team, I, um, I have to, uh, I have to thank the players that were around me because without, you know, without a, without the team, I, I don't score those goals. Um, but yeah, I guess it was, uh, it was a really good experience. Um, obviously working at, as well. I was, I was playing and working. Um, it was quite difficult. I was living, so Apia is around an hour and a half away from my family house. So I would work during the day as an electrician um, and then go to training, get back real late at night, do the same thing again. Um so it was it was difficult, but I did, and I did that for three years. But I, again, I wouldn't change the way uh, I wouldn't change anything because it's gotten to me. It's gotten me here. So um, you know, I I sort of uh, I guess I really appreciate the way that uh, I guess I've been brought up in that aspect of not jumping straight from local to to high professional football. I had to take those steps to get where I have today. So I wouldn't trade that for the world. Um, but yeah, those experiences playing in that second division were. Uh, really fond memories and I've made really, really lifelong friends. Perfect. Well, uh, an interesting and inspiring fact about you, you also just mentioned it right now. You were working part-time as an electrician while playing for Apia. So, we've all read some of those stories. We've seen them online, we've read them, we've shared them among fans. So, it's very inspiring to be honest. So, what then, you know, uh, very difficult time of course. So, what then prompted you to, you know, pick up then football full time? Um, yeah. So, my my old boss actually used to play in the second division in India, um, and he was actually a really good player. He played for Wollongong Wolves. He played uh, had a small stint in the A League as well. Um, so, I was working with him and working. Yeah, it was a um, it was a it was a different time. I, I guess it was a time where I. I had to really pull my socks up and, and decide what am I going to do for a living if I'm, am I going to work or play football? And football was always number one. Like I said before, it was about, um, uh, you know, I had to make sacrifices and uh, I had to travel that distance and I had to work and I had to play football at the same time. And, yeah, and I w- again, I wouldn't trade anything for the world because I guess it was, it was just more motivation for me to be a footballer. Um, and I was lucky enough to work because – a lot of players, uh, I guess, don't work and they don't know what it's like to live uh, a life of, of different work because I still call football work. It, it is technically still work, um, but it is, a, it, is a luxury, it is a luxury job. Um, and I am very, very grateful to be a footballer. But um, I guess sometimes it makes me, I, I think back and realise how lucky I am because as much as I loved working, I love playing football for a living. Um but looking back, I really, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm very grateful for doing what I was doing because that pushed me to be a footballer. Um, and it made me, I guess, uh, realise, again, how lucky I am to, to be where I am. So, yeah, I, I was an electrician for uh, three, uh, two, two years, two and a half, three years. Um, and, I, and I loved every minute of it. It was a, it was, it's a really good job. Um, but yeah, I would choose football over football over anything. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, it, 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 I, I do get this a lot, and it is inspiring to some people. But I guess it's just the 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 way. It's just some things that you have to do to get what you want. Um, and you know, I, I send a message to all the young players out there: to it isn't going to be easy to be a footballer. You have got to take sacrifices. In some ways, it is some you're lucky enough to be 
to go from the bottom to straight to the top. Sometimes you have to take those steps such as I did. You have to take those steps and there are going to be times where you do take two steps back, but sometimes those steps, two steps back actually lead you to be up to the top. So, um, you know, it's something that I, I live by is never give up and, um, and enjoy your football because the minute that you don't enjoy your football is the minute that you probably won't become a footballer. Um, but that's why we all play football because we enjoy it. Um, but at the same time, it's uh, it's taken a lot of sacrifice and hard work to get where I have. And, um, and I appreciate all the people that are around me because I could mention over hundreds of names that have, um, even the people that don't like me, they're the people that also push me too. It's the people that uh, I guess, Another thing I live by is proving people wrong because there are a lot of people that doubt you, um, but it's about proving people wrong and going and not being mean in any way. They're the people that push you to go, you know what, I know I can do that. And you do that. And, you know, then I guess those people do respect you because they go, you know what, I was wrong. So proving people wrong is another is another big thing that I, I guess I could say to all young footballers out there is enjoy your football. Um, uh, enjoy your football understand there are going to be sacrifices. Sometimes you are going to go backwards to go forwards uh, and proving people wrong because there are a lot of people who, who do want to see people fail. Unfortunately, that is, that is life. Um, I'm sure every, any, any player can say that, but I guess those people are also the main reason why I'm here too. So I got to thank all those people who had doubt in me uh, because these are the people that made me uh, to where I am today. Okay. Perfect. Brilliant. So I my my next question was actually about you know we face a similar kind of situation in India also where uh, you know a lot of young players want to play football for a long time in going into their career but then at some particular point of time they are kind of forced to make a cho- choice between uh, a secure job and a f- not so secure football career and most of them end up taking that secure road you know which settles their life but still uh, they're not able to pursue what the heart wants so so stuff like that happen in india so i think not just in india uh, but still yeah so uh, i wanted you to you know send some kind of message to developing footballers uh, you know so that you can uh, so that you know they also get inspired to Uh, follow follow their heart rather than you know uh, take up some some other jobs which they don't really like so do you have such uh, such a message for them yeah i guess like i said before it's about number one enjoying your football um because we all enjoy our football when we're younger um that's the reason why we play it really is just enjoying it is having a smile on our face enjoying it with uh, other people with ourselves with family it's it's about enjoying the game and, and and learning and getting better um that's number one number two is i think as a person you also have to be realistic about yourself um i i had this decision to to pursue work uh, at one point i Uh, I sort of doubted myself and I'm like, you know what, well, I think I'm going to have to choose the road of being an electrician instead of a footballer. But I guess I came to my, for, for, for me, it was about, no, you know what, I I wanted to prove myself wrong um, and I wanted to be a footballer and that I guess was the motivation for me to keep going. Um, it is it is a lot difficult for some other people where luck it, it all does, also does come down to being, to being very lucky um, because there are, There are millions and millions of people that want to be a professional footballer, millions of people that want to be a professional cricketer. Um, so, and sometimes it does come down to to luck of being in the right place at the right time where someone's watching and go, you know what, he, that guy's got a bit, of, a bit of spark or that girl has a bit of spark. Um, so it does come down to that. But nothing is impossible. Um, and that's what... And, and that's what I guess some people uh, some people tend to forget is nothing's impossible. And if you put your mind to it and you and you train hard, you are the last person to leave the field at training. You're the last. You're the you're the one that to do the extras. You're the one to stay back and do the finishing. You're the one to to watch football clips of and learn. Yeah, you know, and continue to learn. Those are the people that usually come out being a footballer um, because you you live and breathe football. So for me, it's it's also being very committed and and knowing when 
the thing or the times where it does get tough, it's also to those are the times that you need to stay strong and true to yourself and I guess uh, train even harder, um, work even harder. But there are some times where it is quite difficult and I understand having to choose choose work over football and, and still having the love for football. But as a person, also being realistic to yourself, I know plenty of friends that um, I guess – uh wanted to be a footballer but also knew that work was important and you so at one point in time there it is difficult to become a footballer the older that you get now especially a lot of play a lot of teams in the world um want younger players so if you haven't made it at that certain age it is very difficult doesn't mean that it can't happen because i was actually a late bloomer where um i was picked at uh, i think i was 22 22 so that's still that's actually quite old in the big scheme of things a lot of players now are 18 getting picked for things so um i think it 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 is difficult it is difficult to sometimes accept the fact that you might not be a footballer but you can always work in football there are plenty of things that uh that do involve football so for me the things that I, i i would like to i guess say to young kids out there is to never give up to understand that Like I said before, sometimes it takes two steps backwards to go forwards. Um, Enjoying your football, uh, but having that commitment to to prove people wrong and to and and to work even harder to be the last one to leave the training field um, and show not only to everyone but to yourself that you you want to be a footballer. Brilliant, brilliant. So yeah, uh, so we talked about your career in the uh, NPL. Uh, So now we'll go to the A League. So in 2018, uh, the Central Coast Mariners snapped you up uh, before the 2018-19 season. They gave you your first experience of the A-League. So you have you you then played with them for two seasons. Uh, you faced the likes of Roy Krishna, Adam Lefondre, Hooper, uh, now Yuande Lopez coming in. So you faced all these players also. So can you give us some insights on your A-League career? You know how how did you feel about the step up from uh, the second division to the A-League? Yeah, well, uh, funny enough, uh, it actually comes back to being an electrician. I'll tell you the story. I um, I actually got a call while I was in a in a in a roof. I was actually in a roof of a house doing some electrical work, and I got a call from the assistant coach of the Central Coast Mariners, who I previously played. We actually played an FA, uh, FA Cup game against, um, and his name is Nick Montgomery. He was the assistant coach at the time, and I got a call from him while I was in a roof, and I had his number um, because we. I remember three years prior to that when I was at Wollongong Wolves, I played against them and I did very well. And he said one day, you know, he could say, have, have my number because one day I might call you. And, and lucky enough, and he did. It was, it was incredible, um, you know, to see that phone ring and that number, which has never been rung before. Um, so I was in a roof at that time. And the minute that I got that call, I, I sort of knew, oh, okay, well, this is, this is going to be good. Um, and yeah, I signed for the Mariners then and there. Um, it was something uh, that every player dreams of is having a call saying, you know, we really want you to, uh, I actually had a trial, one day trial, um, and I ended up signing. So no, it was, what a moment that was for me. Um, and for any player, I think any player would say the same thing to sign your first professional contract, no matter where it is. Um, so yeah, I, I signed at the Mariners. And um, again, it was another step that, I guess is quite uh, it's, it, it was a, it was a step up from the at the MPL. It's a lot quicker. It's uh, you're playing against some unbelievable players who have come from all over the world, um, players that you've watched on TV. So it was as a, as a young player, it was great coming into a to an environment where those players are playing, um, and it was a step up. But again, it was something that I guess I adapted to pretty quickly and. And the Mariners at the time were a team that were facing difficult battles, unable to get off the top at the bottom of the ladder. Um, but it was also a, t- a time, I guess, which I wouldn't change either because I learned so much. Um, I learned how to, again, how to prove people wrong even more, um, to be a team that was struggling uh, to win games. You learn a lot more. You learn. You learn a lot. You learn how to take it. You learn how to manage that because it is as a footballer. It's not only the physical game; it's the mental game, um, and that's what kills a lot of players. Um, and it killed me plenty of times. It, it really rocked my boat, I guess, and really made me think um, think about my football. But again, you just need to stick to your guns. And 
um, you need to to fight through it and to fight as a team because at the end of the day, that's it is, it is a team sport, and the closer you are with your teammates, the the more help it is. So yeah, it was a difficult time, and I um yeah, especially that that second season that I played for the Mariners was it was it was a really good time for me. Uh, before the COVID break, uh, I was banging in some goals. So uh, unfortunately, I um. The game that I come back against Perth Glory, I, I dislocated my shoulder quite badly, so I was out for the rest of the season. Um, that put me out. So yeah, it was a the the A League and the Central Coast Mariners was a, it was a again it was a dream come true. Um, and I've, again, I've made long, long life friends there who I'm still talking to this day. Um, which and some of those players are even Dylan Fox, who's at Northeast, who I'm very good friends with. I was just off the phone with him this morning. Um, you know, that's the type of the. Uh, relationship that you have with these kind of players um and obviously playing with the likes of uh, against the likes of roy krishna you know a terrific terrific player um someone who i played against and you just watch the the, the the talent that he has even uh david williams the talent he has as well is incredible you got eric Pardlu um again who's been in the indian league for a while now and he's established uh quality player you got adam lafondra who scored goals overseas everywhere um, Gary, well, I don't need to speak about Gary. I've spoken about him enough. He's just a you know a terrific player. Um, so you have got play- players that are coming. Joel Kianese, for example, from uh, Hyderabad. You have got these players who are who are realizing the the Indian League has has grown and want to be a part of want to be a part of it. Um, and, and I can see why because I was one of those players that want to be a, you know that wants to be a part of it. So um, again. I was lucky enough to have my first contract in Australia and uh, I would not change that for the ball. Yeah. Uh, so speaking about your signing with the Mar- Mariners, uh, so I think in 2018, 2018-19, uh, this is what I've read. So when they signed you, they signed you along with two other uh, players from the NPL. So you were basically three youngsters from the NPL. Along with another high-profile person who just joined the squad at that time, can you see him? This is you with him. Do you <laughs> recognize? Him? Yes, 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 yes. I do, I do. <laughs> yes. So I just came across this photo very recently. So we had been following Usain Bolt's career. I remember watching his highlights, the one where he scored two goals. Back then, I did not realize that, you know, I would be following his teammate with much more interest two years later. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, what was your experience of uh, playing with, you know, the world's fastest human? He was there yeah, for well, a short um, time. He was there for a very short time, I understand. But still, you played alongside. He scored two goals in that game where you can be seen celebrating with him. So, what was your experience of playing with him? Yeah, wow! What an athlete! That's uh, um, you know the world's fastest man, and to and to share the pitch and to to share his experiences and for him to I guess lay uh, yeah his experiences onto me and uh, it was incredible. Um, uh, world famous, he's got a, the face everyone knows. Um, and when I mean quick, he is quick. Um, I think you have to be there and see it to believe it. Um, yeah, he came in for a trial. And um, I guess after athletics, he wanted to experience something different, which is fair enough. Everyone wants to everyone wants to experience something. Um, I don't think football was his game. I think he realized it. But he gave it his best shot. And that's, that's all you can ask of someone who, you know, it takes a lot. To, for someone to finish their se- uh, to finish their career and want to pursue something else and, and give it a shot because some people don't they're either too scared to or they just don't want to where he wanted to give it his best shot so I was lucky enough to share the pitch with him I actually scored in that game um, and uh, yeah he scored two goals and uh, we actually did that celebration a couple of times at training um, I remember the first uh, first couple of training sessions he came um, uh, media, everything was it was insane um, to have it to have him there. Such a, I guess a, a face really, a face that everyone knows. Um, but at training, the first time we ever sprinted was was amazing. Uh, I remember him sprinting forty meters um, in a game. But also we did a little training game where you had to sprint to to get something. And I actually versed him, and he was just too quick. He's just uh, at the start you beat him, but you never fin- you never finish in front of him. He's just just too quick. Um, but sharing the pitch with him in that game was unreal. Um, I guess that would be a memory that I can 
chair and that photo just says it all. Um, we just, we had a blast. Um, and you know, now he's, he's got a little baby girl and you know, he's enjoying his life as well. So, you know, he, he's earned that and he's earned that, um, through again, I, I believe the commitment and the sacrifices that he took. So, no, what a it was pretty funny. Obviously, you watch that game, and now, now I'm here. <laughs> now I'm here representing the club. So, it's uh, it's small how the world works. It's it's funny how the world works. And but no, it's again, he was a a high profile uh, person, and, and to be a part of it and to to be a part of his footballing journey was it was it was a nice experience. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, like you said, back then I watched the highlights to see how Bolt played. Uh, right now, I find myself watching the same video to observe another person. So, yeah, <laughs> funny. It's funny. Yes. Well, uh, it is. It is. Yeah, we are we are like slowly coming to the final stages of our interview. So, coming back to Kela Blasters and ISL, we are sure that, you know, everyone, like almost every team likes to take things one at a time, which is why it's quite understandable when you are, you know, Focusing on one game after another. So still, but still, I, I'm pretty sure that you must have set some, you know, personal goals for yourself. Uh, you've already scored five goals so far. So far, you've registered an assist also. Six goal contributions, which is actually same as that of Adam Lefondre. So that's, I think that's a great uh, thing to begin with. So what can you, do you mind revealing uh, any of your personal goals for this season? Yeah, I've got them actually sitting right here. Uh, I've got oh. a, I've got a sheet of paper. Where it says my goals. Um, but no, it's uh, every player has personal goals. Um, uh, some players don't like to share it. Some players do. Um, for, for for me, I, I will share. It's 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 nothing too crazy, but it, it's realistic goals. Um, you know, I think uh, some play uh, not some players. I think uh, people expect to have astonishing goals but as players we we i think it's important to uh to stick to realistic goals setting goals that you know are um that that can happen and anything that happens anything better that happens over that those goals uh you know are great you know i mean they're, they're just the bonus they're the ones that go you know what i beat my goals now you set a higher goal for the next year. So my goal is obviously this year is to score into double figures. Um, yeah, I want I want to make sure it's a, it's, it's it's double figures. Um, uh, I set that goal before I come here. Um, it's it's something that I strive to almost every year. Um, so I like to tick off that. I like to tick off that that this season. Um, obviously, being really fit, uh, feeling healthy. Obviously, that's a big part as well. Being fit um, and, and being healthy. I remember having a talk with Costa and him really cementing in my head that it is you got to be grateful to be fit and healthy every day because it is something that unfortunately some people aren't fit and healthy every day um so being fit and healthy every day is is, is a big thing um registering uh registering assists as well uh for, for me it's not just about scoring goals it's about, it's about helping my team score goals um because some days my my luck might not happen. I, I, for instance, the game against um, Jamshed Poor, I missed. Unfortunately, I missed two two clear goals that I should have scored. Um, I'm actually quite disappointed about that. I should be a lot happier. But as a striker, you want to finish every goal, um, every goal that you can, and you know that you know. I, I knew that I could do better with that, but um, you know, for for me, it's about uh, it's about helping other people. And I might not be on my, I might not have my shooting boots on one day where it's just not happening for me. And that happens with everyone. It happens with Ronaldo and Messi. It happens with everyone. Um, but as long as I can contribute to the team and help other people score goals and play, you know, uh, realize that, you know, it might not be my day, but I know that it could be Sahal's, you know, it, it, it's Sahal's day. He's on fire. You know, it's about helping my team um, register goals. So obviously um, getting, a, getting as many as assists as I can. And I've got six here. So I've got another five to go that I want to, want to, obviously contribute to um and obviously staying in asia i think it's something that uh it's an experience that i'm really enjoying and i'd really like to stay um around asia and and, and learn and experience a lot more football um because it is again like i said i'd like to come back to australia when i'm older and, and talking to my grandkids and going you know what i played in i played in india i played you know professional football in india where it was a league that was up and coming and now I look back in 60 years and it's one of the top leagues in the world. So 
um, you know, I'd like to be a, just that experience of being a part of that is is nice. So those are my goals. Um, I know, I, and I know some people don't like to share their goals. They like to keep it. It's like a superstition, if you want to call it. So, but you know, I, I'm proud to say that I want, you know, I want ten goals. I want to be mega fit. I want to register some, some more assists and help the team, uh, and, and and stay and basically stay in stay in the league as well. Yeah. So, well, uh, speaking about that game against Jamshedpur, uh, you scored your second goal of a mistake by Jamshedpur keeper T P Rehnesh, who is a former Kerala Blasters player. If you didn't know earlier, so speaking, you know, after the game, uh, just after the final whistle, uh, we saw you approaching Rehnesh and uh, speaking with him. So, um, what 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 did you actually share with him at that point of time? Oh, I just basically, like I say to every player, I say uh, the best of luck for the next game and for the up and coming season. Yeah, I wish I, it wasn't too much. It was a game where I guess they were disappointed, and you know, when you don't get the result, the last thing you do want to do is have a chat with you know and talk about the game because you are disappointed. So, um, yeah, just basically wishing him all the best and, and wishing him all the luck. Um, yeah, and good health because that's that's the main thing. It's yeah, as much as you know, you're on the field for ninety minutes and. You know, I, I want to win for my team, and I know he wants to win. And mistakes happen, uh, um, but that's the that's the way it is. Um, but so, no, I was lucky enough to score two goals, and at the, at the end of the day, um, you know, the two goals that uh, I should have scored, and I wish I scored, maybe that wouldn't have happened. The other two goals at the end maybe wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So, you know, football happens. Um, you miss those chances for a reason, unfortunately, um, and, and it come back to it come back to to help me and work in my favour. I guess um, being uh, uh, at the right spot at the right time that's what a strike is about um, is being at the right spot at the right time and making, making sure the ball goes in the back of the net and that's something that I'm, I've learned from Gary too it's, it's about realising that you have to be in the right spot at the right time and to having that kind of wisdom brought down to you and, and, and I guess reiterating to you that you know chances will be missed but you know as long as you're there and um, yeah, you ha- to miss a chance you have to be there so you know uh, you know, for the first one, I um, yeah, I missed. But if I didn't make that run, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. The same as the header. Yeah, you know, pulled off. A, he pulled off a really good save. I could have done better, but at the same time, I was there at the right spot, at the right time. Um, and same with the two goals. So that's uh, as much as it's played on my mind, uh, wanting to score those two goals. At the same time, it's uh, I probably wouldn't have scored the two goals at the end. And again, I need to. I need to, as I do all the time. I. I um, like to thank the team because without the team, they, these goals don't happen. Right. Um, so another question on popular demand. Uh, given a chance, will you like to extend your stay with Kerala Blasters? You know, beyond the season. Uh, well, t- to be honest, I I, uh, I don't really like to talk about that. Uh, that's okay. that's my personal thing because I like to focus on the the games that are happening. The more that people, more that you think about in the future, the more you get uh, distracted. Um, right. I, I'm one. Ga- I, I'm a one game at a time person. I like to. I don't like to look into the second, the game after next. I like to look at the game in, in front and and to do my best for the team because I know that if I do my best uh, individually, but all, you know, it, it helps the team. And 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 you know, at the end of the day, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. I love the club. I think the club's brilliant. I think uh, the fan base is incredible. I, I wish I was in Kerala right now, um, experiencing playing in front of the home fans. But unfortunately, it's not to be. Um, so as much as I'd love to answer your question, it's something that uh, I guess I I don't do because I don't like to look into the future when it's only halfway during the season. Um, that's just me. I think it's a respect thing as well. Um, right. It's just it's about putting my full focus into the team. Um, and, and obviously when that time comes, that time comes. Um, but again, like I said, uh, I love the team. I love the squad. The, the players are unreal. And obviously the fan base is just incredible. So... Brilliant. Well, uh, my final question. Uh, so, like you said, no no club is uh, complete without you know their fans. And uh, Kerala Blasters have one of the biggest and uh, best fan bases, not only in India but I think across in the, the world. world. Yeah, in yeah. the world. Yeah, and uh, they they've all seen you know your exploits on the pitch. They love you. Uh, most of them, you know, in fact, they you know uh, they are very disappointed that they cannot support you from the fa- uh, stands this season. So why don't you, you know, send a final message to Kerala Blasters fans before we wrap up this session? 
Yeah, I'd like to thank um, not only now, but when I first joined the club, it was really nice to have so many warming messages. Um, unfortunately, I can't answer all of them as much as I love to. I um, I do try to look as many as look at as many as I can. Um, again, it's sort of a thing where um, uh, it's also a distraction of what I want, but. I know that the fans are there and they are sending me so many messages and it's, uh, I apologize that I can't get to every single message because there are so many and it's really, really, really um, heartwarming and nice to have so much support. Uh, I know all the foreign boys are the exact, would say the exact same thing. Uh, even the Indian players would say the exact same thing. It's, it's very unfortunate that we can't be there, but from a personal point of view, I'd like to thank each and every, every fan that's um, supporting the club because it is a, uh, it is a hard time not being able to play in front of the fans. Um, fans do make football. I was one of them four years ago. I was a fan watching the A-League. Um, you know, it, I know what it's like and, and to have that passion for a club and, and to watch football and love football. And it's disappointing that we can't be a part of it. Um, so, no, I'm um, I'm very disappointed, but I would like to thank each and every person that's um, supporting the club, supporting myself, supporting the players, because you guys don't go unnoticed. Um and yeah, hopefully we um, we do really well. And I guess uh, to wrap it up, I, I I don't want to say that we're going to win the cup because again, I take it one game at a time. If it happens, it happens. And as long as we give our best, um, we we do we set our eyes on winning winning everything. Um, and that's the type of direction the club's going in. Um, so for me, it's just enjoying each and every game, but also getting a result and. I know that if we train hard and work hard, we'll get there. And I, I'm sure that, uh, and, we, and if and if we do win, which fingers crossed we do, it'd be for the fans because they've been exceptional for 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 the league to happen like this. So I'd like to, again, thank everyone for, for your support. And I love to message each and every one of you um, because your support does mean a lot personally to me. Um, and, and hopefully the, uh, the Cobra comes out a few more times during the season and, um, yeah, I think I think uh, now everyone realizes it's the snake now. But no, I, uh, obviously the, the yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for your outstanding support. Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you to Jordan. Uh, you you also it's glad that you understand that you're not alone. Uh, the fans are also behind you, supporting you all the time. So yeah, I think we'll wrap up this uh, session for now. Uh, surely you have a lot of stuff to do late in the day. So I'm not taking any longer. So yeah, that's all uh, guys. Uh, so this was the interview with Jordan Murray, striker Kerala Blasters. So yeah, all the best Jordan. Uh, hopefully we win against, uh, you know, in the next game against East Bengal as well. So yeah. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it any time. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And again, I, um, uh, yeah, wishing everyone, wish, wishing everyone a, a, safe, a safe time through this, through this time that the world's going through because it is difficult for everyone. So wishing everyone a healthy and safe, um, safe time. But thank you for having me.